You know, the more we see of Gendy Tartakovsky's Primal, the more apparent it becomes that this will not be a show for the faint of heart. This latest trailer looks brutal, just as brutal as everything else we've seen, and I'm still holding out hope that it's going to be brutality with a purpose. And yes, I still trust Tartakovsky to pull that off. We will see what ultimately happens, but I can't say I've seen anything here that's discouraging me from at least giving it a shot when it premieres in October. In fact, this trailer has me more excited than the others because I'm recognizing more of what it's going for, and I think that's really important. When you know what something's going to be going for, or at least what it's striving to be, you can have a better sense of whether or not you're going to enjoy it, and whether or not it actually works when you see it. In previous videos I've done on Primal, I've likened it to Ray Harryhausen dinosaur movies in a lot of ways, specifically based on how the dinosaurs look. Clearly they're not going for scientific accuracy at all in any way, shape, or form, but they're going for dinosaurs that look good just as Ray Harryhausen did. I can't really say that Harryhausen's dinosaurs were considered all that accurate even for the time, but they were iconic dinosaurs. However, after seeing this trailer, I realized it reminds me of something else as well. An old animated film by Ralph Bakshi called Fire and Ice. I don't know how many people remember that movie or have even heard of it, but Fire and Ice was like this fantasy film, being by Ralph Bakshi, it was made with an adult audience in mind, but it wasn't like some sort of ultra-violent, ultra-pornographic sort of thing. It was made for a mature audience without being too bloody and not going beyond skimpy outfits or anything. But it also had a very prehistoric setting to it. There were no dinosaurs in Fire and Ice. It was more Conan the Barbarian than it was One Million Years B.C., but I can recognize a certain level of that aesthetic in the trailer for Primal. And it's hard to place exactly what it is. I think mostly it's the backgrounds and also the design of our caveman, who looks kind of like the Neanderthal characters who showed up in Fire and Ice. So, if that was an influence on Primal, then Tartakovsky is really going deep with his influences. I'm sure he probably knows that movie. I don't know if he does, or if he likes it if he does know it. Yeah, I would definitely say there's a hint of Ralph Bakshi in this Gendy Tartakovsky work. With a hint of Edgar Rice Burroughs and Robert E. Howard as well, because there are also creatures in here that are completely beyond the realm of anything we've seen from even speculative prehistory. Like these giant man-bat creatures. I mean, that's the sort of thing you would expect from an old pulp novel, certainly, but... Man, they're an interesting new addition. I certainly am looking forward to seeing how that plays out, because, I mean, knowing what Tartakovsky can do with animation, and especially having seen past works of his where characters have flown, well, this should be interesting with these guys. But what also strikes me interesting about the tone it's going for is that it seems to be taking a very blunt and realistic approach to the idea of survival. It's not going for this idea of drawing a line between good and bad. This is just about what it means to stay alive in a completely wild environment. Like, take the sequence with the mammoth. I don't think, based on anything we've seen, that the mammoth deserves to die. For all we know, he's actually wandered off alone so he can die, as elephants do. But, nevertheless, our caveman and his T-Rex, if that is a T-Rex, are attacking him. And they're attacking him because they need to eat. That's the sort of thing that you generally wouldn't see in these kind of things. There's this odd habit in a lot of works about animals, particularly animated ones, that tends to portray being a carnivore as akin to being a villain. It's the, kind of weird. Like, you kind of expect it in... Uh, kids media, like Land Before Time or something. Occasionally you get something like The Lion King, which can't very well shy away from the fact that lions eat meat. 
But at the same time, most of what you see usually tries to depict being a carnivore as a bad thing. The carnivores are the villains because they want to eat the other characters. Sometimes they're even just mindless killing machines, whereas the herbivores are nearly anthropomorphized if they are also animals. Like, sometimes it's even like in uh, Zootopia, for example, Carnivorism is something that needs to be overcome. It's still a negative trait, even though carnivores are just as civilized as herbivores. So, it's, um... Yeah, it's always struck me as kind of weird, and it's not just in kids' media either. It's even in stuff that's intended for adults. Darren Aronofsky's Noah, for example. Uh, I know I'm going off on a tangent, but I am trying to make a point here. Darren Aronofsky's Noah, that's the story of Noah and the Great Flood, and if you know anything about that story, you know that the Flood comes about because God is so disgusted with how sinful mankind has become that he decides he's going to wipe them all out. Well, according to Darren Aronofsky, the greatest sin mankind ever committed was eating meat, and the reason Noah and his family are spared is because they're vegan. That really does seem to be what it boils down to. I don't like Darren Aronofsky's Noah, by the way. If I believed it had any sense of self-awareness, it might have been a great satire of why people are so annoyed by vegans, but I don't think that's the case at all. I don't think it's nearly as clever as that. But getting back to the point that I'm trying to make here, I don't see any hint of that in Primal. It's going for this sense of you gotta do what you gotta do if you want to live. So these guys are gonna kill this mammoth and they're gonna eat it. Not necessarily because they're the bad guys, they're our protagonists so we're gonna be following them, but because that's what's necessary. I'm sure there will be occasions where the characters do have to decide what is right and what is wrong, but at the very least, I will say it doesn't seem like they're basing it on what to eat. What you eat isn't necessarily going to influence what is good and what is evil in this series. And if that is the case, if I'm reading this correctly, then man, that's refreshing. And how about the grotesque nature of this animation? There's this montage towards the end of the trailer where you have a whole bunch of prehistoric creatures just roaring at the screen. Not all at once, like I said, it's a montage of different clips, but the camera's right up in their faces and, I mean, just look at this pteranodon right here. That is nasty. And again, that's sort of shying away from the whole idea that this is some sort of cutesy little Land Before Time thing. Nothing against Land Before Time. Love that movie. Yes, I still like it, sue me. But we're clearly going for something that is not geared in that direction. These are not cute animals. These are ferocious animals. Even the non-carnivorous ones like the mammoth, they're still pretty brutal. That old mammoth guy, he looks like he's seen some stuff. He's covered in scars, he's missing a tusk. That's clearly a mammoth who has been through a lot, and mammoths are not carnivorous. So, yeah, this is gonna be something else. It, I haven't really seen another animated series that looks like Primal in a very long time, if at all. I, like I said, the only other thing I could possibly compare it to would be Ralph Bakshi, but even then, it's not in Ralph Bakshi's art style. This is clearly Gendy Tartakovsky. But it's not Gendy Tartakovsky like we see in Samurai Jack, where it's very smooth, no outlines, very aesthetically appealing in a way. This is going for something a little more grotesque, a little more visceral. And, well, despite that, I actually think it works. Because ugly animation can turn you away from a series, but if it's ugly with a purpose, if it's ugly in an aesthetically pleasing way, as odd as that may sound to say, then it's something you can overlook and you can give it a shot. You can even get used to it after a while. So Primal will be airing at midnight on October 7th, and I will be there. I'm usually up late anyway, so 
I'm definitely going to check this out. Don't know how well I'll sleep afterward, but this is something I do not want to miss. I hope I wind up liking it. I really do. I will brace myself just in case it does turn out to be just exploitative, trashy stuff. But based on what I've seen, I don't think it's going to be. And if it isn't, if it actually is going for something more, then man, we are in for an event. That's really all I can say at this point. So, until October rolls around, this is the Omni Viewer signing off. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it as well as subscribe to the channel for more content of a similar nature. Also, check the description for links to our Twitter, DeviantArt, and Patreon pages, as well as the Amazon link for the novel Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, penned by yours truly. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.